Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jakob Bianco, and uh, I want to change the way how we treat rheumatic bowel disease by focusing the therapy on prevention. Hard ultrasound is the most common tool to image uh, heart valves. So on this panel over here, you can see a normal heart and a normal micro valve. Healthy valves are thin and flexible. They open wide and uh, close shut. And this allows the heart to pump efficiently blood throughout the body. On this panel over here, you can see a diseased micro valve, uh, diseased by rheumatic valve disease. Uh, the leaflets are thick and stiff, and the valve motion is restricted in opening and closing. The valve becomes dysfunctional, and it can start to leak and to block blood flow. Here's a photo of a mitral valve that's normal. It's thin and smooth. And over here, this is a rheumatic mitral valve. The leaflet is thick, it is stiff, and it is scarred. So why do leaflets that look like sort of baby skin change to elephant skin? We don't understand that process well, but that's the research uh, we are doing on. Uh, what we know, however, is that uh, rheumatic valve disease can start from uh, a, a common strep throat that is left untreated. It can be prevented by timely antibiotic uh, prophylaxis, and that's, this approach works well in the developed countries uh, with uh, rich resources. But this approach is failing in countries with not too many resources. So this map over here shows world uh, and color-coded prevalence of the disease and the, the death rates. So there, were, there are about 68 million existing cases of rheumatic heart disease out there, and Africa and Asia are most affected. So about 1.4 million people die each year. Uh, maternal death is frequent, uh, up to 33%. Heart failure is uh, common in about a third of the patients. Uh, they develop atrial fibrillation, which is a common arrhythmia that can lead to associated stroke. So these patients need to take heart failure medications. They need to take blood thinners to keep the blood thin and prevent stroke and they often need surgery to fix their failing valves. Because most patients that have that disease are fairly young uh, and health costs are high. Uh, this, in addition to the human burden and suffering, uh, causes a lot of strain on the healthcare resources of the economies. More recently, uh, we have shown that you can uh, use medical treatment to prevent and alleviate uh, mitral valve damage. On this panel over here, you can see a mitral valve exposed to a heart attack. The leaflets are thick and they are uh, uh, stiff and they are scarred and they're inflamed. A lot of these inflammatory and prophybotic pathways are upregulated, but treating them with a common blood pressure medication can blunt all those upregulated pathways, and as a result, uh, the mitral leaflet is thinner, is less inflamed and less scarred. All those inflammatory and prophybotic pathways are upregulated in rheumatic heart disease, which gives us an opportunity to directly target those pathways to help prevent disease progression. Again, we don't, we don't want this uh, nice looking valve to turn into elephant skin. So how does uh, artificial intelligence play into this? Well, we'll use this uh, uh, therapy uh, and artificial intelligence to roll it out. So here is a population pyramid of patients with rheumatic heart disease. A lot of patients have, have uh, mild disease, but as the disease progresses, it gets more significant. We use some ultrasound scanners that are wireless and portable and can be used uh, in the field and they, they interface with uh, smartphones. We connect that data with uh, blood biomarker data. And that data will then be uploaded to the cloud and will feed a machine learning algorithm. And that algorithm will uh, learn to detect and with pattern recognition in the biomarkers that, um, information and in the echo information what rheumatic heart valve disease is. And this approach will allow us to detect very early borderline, subtle, echocardiographic and, and, uh, and uh, biomarker uh, uh, findings that may suggest traumatic heart disease. And this approach will allow early diagnosis when the valve is still uh, not as diseased and we can use early prevention. So uh, the combination, the powerful combination of artificial intelligence and our prevention approach will help to reduce the, the burden of traumatic valve disease. Thank you. Thanks, Jakob. Okay, so why don't we start with Rich? We'll start in the middle this time. Yeah, so uh, very nicely done. I uh, really liked the, I mean, the, when you painted the picture of elephant skin, that was really helpful. There's a, a study that comes out every couple of years for the National Science Foundation that shows you know the public doesn't understand the language of science. So painting a picture with words, analogies, and metaphors is a really effective way. So that I, I found that very useful. You presented a lot of information, uh, and so I, I got a lot. Um, and that might be also the thing I might say that there was there was so much, and it was coming at me so quickly that um, if there was maybe just a way to kind of cut it back a little bit, um, so maybe just the one key message could come through a bit more. And I might also think about starting off with you know that really impressive stat of or scary stat of 1.4 million people, mostly young people, die every year. And just 
you know, kind of let people sit with that for a second. Just put that up on screen as a number. Just like take that in for a second. Or 68 million people are suffering from this. Think about that. And maybe give a, a social stat or some social math to put that in, into some kind of perspective. So, yep, let's go. Carrie? Um, uh, yeah, I agree. And also at the beginning, I think maybe instead of showing the valves first, I would show human faces first. Like these are the people who have this disease, who are dying. You know, this is what it's like for them. Um, and then I, I, I was a little confused about, um, so how is it diagnosed now? Uh, how would this change that? It seemed to me then like what, we were, what you were saying is we could, we could do very cheap, easy, in the field diagnosis. And so then I was also wondering, but so, why does it, so you catch it earlier, but so then what? Does that mean that that's, that's not prevention exactly, that's potentially treatment, but like, so I was a little confused about the implications, but, but certainly you did get across that it's a, it's a huge problem and it affects a lot of people and it, was, and it was great, it was heartening to see new technology coming to bear on it, so great. Heartening. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I, um, really like the two videos you had at the beginning where wherever you want to place in the presentation is up to you but um um showing that it's sort of the normal heart valve versus the diseased mm -hmm. heart valve i thought and the fact they could be running at the same time um was really helpful for me to be able to see that come with 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 the pictures um and then when you later showed the sort of the molecular pathway involved in that i think that that would have been an opportunity to maybe simplify that a little bit and more clearly show the differences maybe with some uh, like animation on the slide, so as you were talking about it, you could you could have arrow, you could circle different points or have arrows going, and then show how one pathway works and then how the other pathway works. Um, uh, uh, yeah. And Christine, um, not much to add. I, I just want to echo that what I thought was really important about the just fo focusing on the visual elements um, was in the beginning you used very good um, descriptive language to talk about the differences. So you didn't just show it and assume that we would understand it, but you actually described it, and not just um, the baby versus elephant skin, but also in the videos, which I thought was really helpful for me as a learner. And um, one of the things to think about for those later visuals is really focusing in on also describing what's happening there. Um, and if you can't succinctly describe it, sometimes don't include it. Um, it's one way of thinking of it. But overall, again, that the one point for me dying, the um, use of metaphor are all very good. Great. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah.